And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Masters of Venice is, yet again, another one of that genre that I love, that of trading in the medieval period in the European area. Woo hoo 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 hoo! Well, that doesn't stop me from seeing if the game is any good or not. It certainly does dampen my enthusiasm before playing it. Masters of Venice could, I think, could be called a stock market game, even though there isn't, you know, your modern day stock market involved in the game, but there is the stock market here in Venice to some degree. There's different shares that you can buy of different things, and it's all about negotiating prices up and down. Let's take a look at it. Now there's a lot going on in this game, and I'm not going to be able to explain it to you, I'm not even going to try. What I'm trying to give you is a general feel to the game. Here is the board, and I have to say that of all the game boards I've ever seen, this is possibly one of my least favorite ever. It's small, it's crowded, and it doesn't make any sense just looking at it. Um, it's not fully set up, you would have cubes on each of these docks here. There would be some cubes, and different cubes will show up on them as the game goes by, but the game is going to revolve around these boards with pegs in, and I cannot tell you how much I hate boards with pegs in these days. It seems like, I don't know, just a pain. But as the game progresses, you are going to be moving this bottom peg here to show how many orders. That means how many of those you can sell. Up here at the top here is the price of the item. So iron, right now, starts at a price of 40, and at the bottom is the price of the shares, which starts at 40. You need to keep track of when these, when the price goes up or down, and when the share price goes up or down. In fact, it's such a kind of complicated thing to keep track of that the game actually comes with a brochure, which is a player aid. And in this, it tells you when the, here, the resource price goes up in this situation, down here, up here, up here, up here, here, the share price goes up here, up here, up or down. Um, here the orders go down when this happens. And you need to keep track of all these different things. The game players are going to be buying shares of, different, of the different companies, but they're also going to be buying cubes and going back and forth. Now there's a couple of features of this game. One of these is, during different points in the game, you'll see that it says bid here. Uh, each time you bid, you'll be moving along this track uh, uh, per turn until you get to another bid, then you bid again. When you bid, you're basically build it, bidding for these special abilities. There's different uh, characters that you can be. And so if you, if you are, for example, the gondolier, then as the round ends, you move the gondolier to the next spot. Or if you're the guild hall, you get to draw two cards there. These won't really make much sense to you. The thief, you can steal a cube when you visit a dock. Now these, these cards that are here are cards that players can get by bidding and whoever bids the highest gets first choice and so on and so forth but that bidding itself can affect the orders and the prices of the goods so again you always have to be on the lookout for that and then as you move on these spaces one of the players is going to get this which can be used again to adjust prices players are then going to simultaneously select where they're going to go each turn this shows all the different buildings on here and these colors match uh, I don't really know what they match because they don't match the color of the building. See, for example, the church is green. It's not green here. Like I said, it's a very non-intuitive board. But you all pick at the same time and show where you're going to go. Notice that this also allows you to bid secretly with numbers on the outside of it. It's a pretty nice device. And that's an interesting thing. When you go to these different places, if you go to one of the buildings on the outside, everybody gets to take that action. And the actions usually revolve around buying or selling cubes, or buying or selling shares at the stock market. Or you can go to one of these inner buildings, in which case only you get to take the action. You can go to one of the docks and buy cubes there. Uh, you can go uh, to these churches and buy favors, or buy these cubes that are here. There's all different things going on in this game. and But it all revolves in manipulating these prices so that you can get points, because you're basically trying to get these orders. For example, here the Cardinal wants a jeweled cross, so he needs two green and one brown cube. So you need to get two greens and one brown cube 
as best you can so that you can complete that order. That is a very, 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 very simplified version of how this game works. There's a lot of pieces, cards, there's a bag that you can pull the gems out of. You're constantly moving around all these different goods. In fact, there's another one even on the board here for lumber itself. It has its own little track there. You can even buy shares in the different markets so that whenever someone buys or sells there, you get money and points. And so all of this is going on at the same time until the final round and then the game will end. Alright, well let me let me tell you this. It's the fact that the game itself is not a terrible game. In fact, I think it's a very well designed game. But I don't like it and it's mostly for a few reasons. You can call me silly if you want, but the theme just falls completely flat for me. I cannot tell you how tired I am of going into the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries and trading goods and shares. And uh, hoo hoo hoo. I do people do that for fun in real life? Anyway. So that's not very exciting. However, I can look past that in the case of a good game, and in this game, I might have. But the biggest problem of this game, by far, is the bookkeeping. Moving those pegs happens every single turn, almost every single action. You have to check them and move them, and then turn order is important because if he sold them, now the price has changed for you, and then you have to recalculate everything you did, and the game slows to a crawl. Because I was, I know I was going to buy three of those shares, or do this, and... Oh, you did that first, and oh, all right, now i got to figure out what I'm going to do in response, and wow. This, as a computer game, would be fine, because you click a button, boop, 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 all the price would change. You look at it, see what's changed. Here you have to move the pegs around, and then you, it's going to take you two or three games to figure out which pegs to move when, and when the share prices go up and down. And it has a very heavy feel to it. It's not very obvious right away how you score points. Uh, the best ways to score points when you're supposed to sell because selling under 10 or 20 ducats, you know, that can really mess you up completely. How much to bid, there's just, you really, you go in in the beginning and you're shooting blind. And if you play someone who's really smart economically, they're going to destroy you. That could be the mark of a good game because it simulates the economic market well, but it's just very difficult to understand. Uh, for new players and because of that the game's going to drag to a crawl and I don't want to play a three hour game on this subject even if it is a great game. I don't think it's great because a great game wouldn't require this amount of bookkeeping. I'll say that it's a good game. Some people are going to like it. I'm just not one of them. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.